Good morning and welcome everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading comes from Daniel chapter 10. And behold, a hand touched me and sent me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, Understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words." The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who is charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, every one whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from Revelation chapter 12. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. 
For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated, please, and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning and welcome, everyone. That was really weak. You guys still asleep? You are? Well, then we'll wake you up a little bit. Good morning, everyone. We'll do this one more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Now you're starting to wake up one more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. All right. Today we have something a little bit unusual in church. It's called the Festival of St. Michael and All Angels. This isn't something that we have frequently. And it, there's this thing that's called the liturgical calendar, the, the church year calendar. So you get these readings that are assigned weeks and weeks, and there are certain readings for certain festivals. So we have St. Michael and All Angels. Can you guys tell me what an angel is? Anybody? Anybody? It's a person with wings who went to heaven because they did good things. You know what? That is often our understanding of angels, but that is not what the Bible says an angel is. Anybody else want to try? Yes. A divine being that serves the Lord. You've been through confirmation class. A divine being that serves the Lord. Now, you guys love the Christmas story, right? You guys like Christmas? You know we're less than three months away from Christmas. This is a good thing, right? What is one of the things that's part of the Christmas story when it, when it comes to angels? The shepherds. The shepherds were out in the fields, and there was an angel that came and appeared to them. And what was the first words that came out of the mouth of the angels? Anybody? Fear not. not. Why would the angels have to say, fear not? Hmm. You see, in our culture, oftentimes we portray angels as these cute little chubby babies, right, with wings. You know what I'm talking about? You see them in pictures and, and uh, little things. 
That's not quite how they're portrayed in the Bible. You see, angels are very powerful, divine beings. And there's a reason that they need to be powerful and divine. One of the things for angels to do is to protect us, to fight for God's children. They need to be divine, spiritual beings with power so that they can do things that we cannot do. This is a good thing. And that's part of what we celebrate today, that God has given us these special angels to do great things in his kingdom. They follow his, his commands, and they work for good. Let's fold our hands, let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift that you've given to us in St. Michael and all of the angels. And we ask you, Lord, to give us faith, to trust that they are indeed working all around us, even though we may not see them. Help us, Lord, continue to grow in our faith each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You guys can all return to your seats. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as I mentioned in the children's message, we're celebrating St. Michael and all angels today. And part of our readings is about a great spiritual battle that is taking place in heaven, and it continues on earth. Now, this helps us to understand to some degree, I believe, the world in which we live. It helps us also understand part of our experience and part of our role, our godly role in this world. It especially helps us to understand the church as God's kingdom of grace. Now, I believe you'll agree with me that there is a lot of division and conflict within our country and in the world today. It seems that there are battles happening everywhere. Now, some of them are political in nature. The Republicans and Democrats are constantly butting heads and battling with one another. Some are economic in nature, as you see people that are struggling to make ends meet are battling corporate giants. Some battles are moral in nature, others focus upon human rights. A big one that was in the news this week, in case you happen to miss it, miss it it was this impassioned plea of a teenage girl as she had the opportunity to address the United Nations concerning climate change. And this is a, a quote, hopefully I quoted, I'm quoting this correctly, in her view, the world is coming to an end as it is being destroyed by the use of fossil fuels for the sake of eternal profits. It's this whole concept that her world is coming to an end. There's a battle that is going on. These are just some of the examples of present day battles. Now, we all know that there's going to be a really important battle going on at 1 o'clock today, right? We pray for the angels to be with the bills. <laughs> so, as we, as much as that is a kind of a joking thing, we are familiar with division and conflict and battles. They just happen all the time. If you are a studier of history, you know that battles of various kind has happened throughout all of recorded history. Sometimes in history, they've been very intense battles, lots of them, where other times there's been very few and it's a better time of peace. Kind of history, you have this cycle up and down. When people experience those times of intense battles, then there's this sense that comes across people of discouragement and a loss of hope, diminishing of hope. Our Lord has a special message to give you and me 
courage and hope during this time I see of constant battles going on. In some ways, it may sound frightening and overwhelming, as it may sound like there's nothing you can do. However, in another way, it is comforting because the battle's already been won. We're just kind of going through some of the uh, temporal engagements of it. For us, the victory has been won by Jesus Christ. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, we read, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Now, when you picture heaven, do you picture that as a place of war and conflict? It's not usually what comes to mind for me. Odds are, I believe the answer is no. When we think of heaven, we usually think of a place that is filled with peace and beauty and tranquility. So this can be a bit of a hard concept to envision war in heaven. The text in Revelation continues. <clears throat> but he, that is the dragon, was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. This is the rebellion of the devil or Satan. And he's attempting to overthrow God. He's trying to put himself into the place of God. The Lord dispatches Michael and his angels to defeat and cast out of heaven the devil and all who are attempting to set themselves up as God. And that's a key thing for us to understand because that's important for us in our life in this world. St. Michael and his angels, they win the battle, they defeat the devil and his angels, and they throw them all down to earth. And you know what the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear that is? Oh, great. Now I got to deal with it. Isn't that kind of the reality? He's cast out of heaven to earth, and the battle continues here. What Satan wants to do more than anything is to create circumstances where people will join his cause. Satan's trying to convince people that there is no God, or they are to be a God unto themselves, or no one can tell me what to do. You know what I mean? This is kind of Satan playing his deceptive games. Satan's trying to get people to rebel against God. And he uses deception and division and conflict and fear, and greed, and selfishness, and so many other things to get people to worship someone or something other than the one true God. That we try to displace him in our life. That's the work of Satan. When you look at the problems and the challenges of this country, this world, what do you see? Do you see other people as the problem? Often I kind of see that happening, that there's a problem and, well, it's those people are the problem or those people are the problem. You know what? That's exactly what the devil wants us to think, that people are the problem. He wants us to battle flesh and blood. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The real battle, the real struggle, is this great spiritual battle that's going on. It's a battle for the heart. It's a battle for the hearts of people. Who is it that is God of your heart? Explaining a little bit further. 
In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, it says, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Two key things, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You see, the the devil is this great accuser and fault finder. He's the one that, he does statements like, did God really say that? To put doubt in your mind. Or, what is God hiding from you? Certainly, there's something he wants you to know, and if you knew it, then things would be so much better. Or, Make God prove himself. Or, what, you could do better than God. Or, you don't need God. Or then you get into the pride thing. Well, certainly you know better than other people. If you could only get them to do what you want them to do, then everything would be okay. Yeah, that's a real tempting one, isn't it? But then you know what the devil does? He turns around and he says to God, well, now look at what they did. They violated your commands. They need to be kicked out. He's playing both sides of the equation. Oh, boy. I think there's an important sentence for us to remember in all of this, that they've conquered him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You see, it is the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ that wins the victory. That's what wins hearts for people, or wins hearts of people for God. The Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, it defeats the devil. It covers sin. It generates faith. It turns people's hearts toward God and it fills it with a heart of love to share that with one another, care and compassion. There's a great spiritual battle that's going on around us. The Lord has provided all sorts of tools, uh, great power for us to use. Are we using those tools? You can look in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and there you see the armor of God. I'm not going to go into all of that. You can read that for yourself at home. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, the armor of God. One of the pieces for today is for us to remember that God provides angels and archangels to engage in the battle around us, but they do it in ways that we never see. This is a matter of faith. God provides to us, the church, this special protection and this special power. We get to engage in this great spiritual battle, and he calls us to trust in this, to trust in him. Now, we can take comfort in that power and the might of God. That's a good thing. But you know what Jesus really wants us to take comfort in? Just simply the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. Your sins are forgiven. You are his child. And there is nothing in this world that can take you away from that. That is a great thing. The blood of the Lamb, it marks you as a child of God. It writes your name in the book of heaven. And it doesn't matter what happens in all of these battles here on earth. You have eternal life in heaven, and it can't be taken away. So we can engage in the battle for the hearts of people with confidence and hope. You know, there's always struggles that we have to face in life. Do you guys ever get discouraged? I do. At times, you look at things and you go, why, why am I doing this? It's almost as if there's no hope. But God says, don't give up the battle. 
continue to engage, we always have a message of hope because we have a God who has already won the battle. We have a God who loves us so much that he sent his son to take on flesh, to live with us, to die for us. He's defeated Satan so that we can have new life forever. We have a God who can overcome the worst of situations. We have a God who teaches and models humility, love, care, and concern for people as we engage in this activity. It's not about flesh and blood, but it's about the hearts of people. A God that loves us, and we get the opportunity to love our God and love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will now have, um, let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christian may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel. Satisfy the wants of your creatures and help those who call upon you in any need that they may have patience in the midst of suffering and according to your will be released from their afflictions. Lord, we lift up to you those that we have in our health concern list today. And Lord, we lift up to you our Sunday school. We thank you for the service of our Sunday school superintendent and teachers and assistants, the parents, and all of the children that participate. We ask you to bless them all as they grow together in the knowledge and the love of the Lord. And Lord, we lift up to you our preschool. Thank you for the service of Diana Cooper, our teacher, and Dawn De La Valley, the aide, and other people that provide support and assistance. We ask you to be with all of the children and their families. May this year be a year that is a blessing to all of them and for these children as they grow together. And Lord, we lift up to you all of the people that have been affected by Hurricane Dorian down in the Bahamas. It's such a devastating event. We ask you to be with all of the people that are providing aid and support, that you open ways for people to continue to be in locations of safety and that they can have the basic necessities of life, of food and clothing and shelter. That you lead and, and direct all of the hands that are providing aid, that it would be effective and give praise and glory to you. And Lord, we lift up to you the trunk or treat event that's going to be happening here at St. Mark in the near future. We ask you, Lord, to be with Greg and all of the people that are working on this particular project, that it may be a great opportunity for the community to come together and there would be opportunity for relationships to grow and develop and your word of grace to be shared. And Lord, as I was joking around a little bit about a great conflict this afternoon with the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots, what we pray for, Lord, is that you would keep all of the players safe in this endeavor, that it would be a wonderful event, 
that there would be good sportsmanship on all sides. Lord, we ask you to lead us and guide us in our hearts and in all the endeavors that we engage in every day. In the name of your Son, and we pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.